We're back in the workshop. Um, I wanted to show you a new design that I'm working on for quilt boxes. So, in a previous video I made these. Um, these are just a shallow box that have a little recess out of the bottom. And the idea was I was going to fill these up with wood chips and these would be my quilt boxes. Um, they're pretty shallow so I don't think that a couple inches is going to be enough for a New England winter. So I rethought the design, put a little more thought into it, and here's what I came up with. This is basically um, a box and I built it like all the other boxes with, uh, with biscuit joinery. At the top here I drilled some three quarter inch holes and then used my router to just kind of make some slots. This is going to be my ventilation. Uh, a couple things that were annoying this year to me is that the uh, <coughs> getting ventilation above the uh, inner board and below the telescoping top cover was a, was a challenge. Um, I used a uh, I used a notch inner board for one hive, and the other one I just kind of put up on shims, but the shims kept falling off, and I always had to remember to put them back on, and uh, I just wanted a more elegant solution, something that was a lot more easy for me to, to service. So so this is going to serve as the uh, the ventilation now, and what I'm going to do is um, I ran all my hives without top entrances this year, and it seemed to work okay. I'm going to continue that. So I got some, uh, some regular window screen that I cut into strips, and I'm just going to staple this to the inside of these, uh, these vent holes. And that'll keep uh, moths or ants or other critters out of the, the top of the hive. Um, on the bottom of this, it's just a regular, I didn't, uh, I didn't notch out the bottom here, it's just a flat bottom. Um, I cut a couple of uh, stretchers here to go across to kind of support um, some hardware cloth that I'm going to put in the bottom. I was going to use window screen, but there's a reason I chose, uh, a couple reasons actually. I chose to, to get some hardware cloth and I just kind of bent it up into the shape that's going to fit in the bottom here. I'll show you this one over here that's a little bit further along. So I'm about to staple this, uh, hope I'm not shaking the camera too much here. Uh, I'm trying to show you a lot though. So I'm going to use my uh, staple gun and just kind of staple this with like some, uh, some half inch uh, uh, narrow crown staples into the box. And I've got, got a little um, piece of uh, quarter inch MDF here just to kind of give me my B space so that I know there's a quarter inch between the uh, the screen and whatever's below it. So this is a quilt box for this winter but I plan to use this in the summer also maybe as a feeder. So the reason I used hardware cloth is it should be strong enough to support a bunch of these um, these quart jars. Um, these boxes are let's see eight inches so I'm going to staple these up and then fill them with wood chips and show you what they look like. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, so that's this one, and uh, if I was going to use it as a feeder in the summer, again I could put a bunch of jars down in here. Um, as many as I think I need. And then uh, when I go to service the hive, I can just lift this whole thing off, feeders and everything, and I won't have to worry about um, taking out one little piece at a time. Uh, like I said, this, this past year I had to take out, uh, take the top off, take the shims off the top, take out the feeder inside, take off the, uh, the box I was using to extend so that the, I could put the feeder. Uh, for this year, for this winter, here I got this one already filled up. Um, this is just uh, like animal bedding. It's uh, this is cedar. Um, I know you're not supposed to put cedar in like uh, hamster cages. You're supposed to use pine because cedar can actually be lethal for for hamsters. And um, bugs don't like cedar, which is why I, I use this. 
I know that you know bees are bugs, but apparently from other people saying like there's actually no problem with using cedar with bees, it does, doesn't affect them. Um, they make beehives out of, out of cedar, and um, and they live in cedar trees and stuff. So it, apparently it's uh, not bad for them. So there's the bottom. Uh, I shook it a little bit. There's some coming out the bottom. I'm not really too worried about that. Um, but this gives me a good, I don't know, four inches or so of uh, insulation, and these these thick sh uh, chips should uh, let the uh, the moisture rich air come out. And then if it condenses, it'll drop down on here, and then the ventilation will allow uh, the air to dry the top chips when you get a drier day. Um, and uh, that keeps the bees uh, a little bit warmer, and but more importantly, dry for the winter. So that's it for this video. Uh, I'm going to be wrapping up the bees for winter uh, pretty soon here, and quite literally because I've got some um, half-inch foam insulation that I'm going to wrap the hives in, and um, that should do a lot for uh, keeping them warmer in the winter, and they'll have to expend less energy and hopefully uh, need less uh, stores to get them through, because um, they don't have a ton of honey saved up uh, right now. I might also feed them with some dry sugar. If you look up the uh, I guess mountain camp method, it's a method for feeding um, dry sugar right above the hive in case they need more in the winter time. So uh, my plan is I'm going to um, probably take the feeders off the weaker hive pretty soon or at least put this quilt box above the feeders to keep them from freezing and um, be cutting this down, taping it around the hives, putting a mouse guard, uh, which is basically just uh, some hardware cloth that mice can't get into the hive, but the bees can still get out if they need to uh, at the entrance. And um, that'll be it for the winter. They'll just uh, ride it out, and I probably won't touch them at all all through December or January, and um, hope they make it. See you next time.